Armed with wings and some of the most powerful engines in the world, aircraft carriers are about to take off into the skies. They could become a new class of massive bombers or the largest cargo carriers in history, or at the very least, a familiar sight that Marvel's shield marvels at. This isn't the first attempt at such a hybrid vessel, but it is as close as ever to success at building a massive vessel that can exploit both sea and air and truly introduce the U.S. military to the best of both worlds. And this is all thanks to a slew of groundbreaking 21st century technologies. As far back as the 1920s, the U.S. military set out to build flying aircraft carriers and in two cases even succeeded. USS Macon and USS Akron were two rigid airships from the time built to serve as airships armed with five planes launched into the battlefield and recovered via a hook system that lowered them into the airstream. The firsts of their kind, these aircraft carriers had a bright future ahead of them until they were, on different occasions, faced with severe weather conditions and both fatally crashed. Almost a century has passed since these events. The U.S. now has aircraft carriers that would stare severe weather storms in the face and cruise through them. And with renewed interest in flying aircraft, thanks to China's race to catch up to America's aircraft carrier dominance, the U.S. Navy now has a slew of technologies that its flying aircraft carrier programs could employ to bring their airborne dreams to life particularly the nuclear power plants. Two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors power the USS Gerald Ford, the U.S. Navy's latest and most advanced carrier. These nuclear reactors produce at least 484 megawatts of electricity. That's enough electricity to power 363,000 houses. Enough electricity to power the 100,000 ton USS Ford for 25 years without stopping and possibly enough electricity to thrust an aircraft carrier into the skies. This is one of the latest concepts of a catalog of attempts at flying aircraft carriers since the ill-fated airships. Between the airships and a Bechtel-powered carrier have been very interesting programs, all focused on developing the much-coveted flying aircraft carrier. <laughs> At least four different flying aircraft carrier programs have gone through the U.S. military, each one as interesting as the next. Here are those programs. Boeing 747 Airborne Aircraft Carrier. The 1970s came with the U.S. Air Force experimenting with the idea of converting one of its large aircraft into a flying aircraft carrier full of parasite fighters that could be deployed and even recovered in midair. Among the contenders for this role were the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy and the Boeing 747. Boeing would take the lead when they correctly pointed out in their proposal that the 747 offered superior range and endurance when flying with a full payload of an impressive 883,000 pounds. The 747 would therefore be able to carry up to 10 microfighters at a time. Boeing would specially design and build the microfighters to be small enough to be housed within the 747, along with an apparatus that would allow the large plane to carry the fighters a long distance, drop them where they were needed to fight, recover them once again, and refuel them if need be. But some uncertainties would surface. From the fuel range to how well the Boeing microfighters would fare against the advanced threats they were supposed to square off with. Ultimately, the proposal never made it off the page of Boeing's report, but the report did establish that despite the challenges, the concept, although likely costly, was actually technically feasible. Nuclear-powered Lockheed CL-1201. Lockheed, in staying true to their nature of pushing the limits, decided to go at a flying aircraft carrier the size of a traditional aircraft carrier. This aircraft or aircraft carrier would weigh a literal groundbreaking 5,265 tons and stand as tall as a 14-story building. To get such a massive structure to fly, the design included a 1,120-foot wingspan with a 560-foot-long fuselage. That's the length of two and a half Boeing 747s end-to-end. -end. 
The Lockheed CL-1201 could, however, surprisingly be powered by only four huge turbofan engines powered by regular jet fuel to an altitude under 16,000 feet. At this point, the nuclear energy from an onboard reactor takes over and powers the jet for 41 days straight without refueling or having to land for a second. In fact, the aircraft could maintain a Mach 0.8 cruising speed for this period and fly at around 30,000 feet up. This massive aircraft would have a crew of 845, be able to deploy 22 multi-role fighters, and maintain a hangar bay for repairs but would also likely cost billions of dollars and far too many labor hours to produce and maintain, which must have contributed to why the aircraft never made it past the proposal stage. But its concept to this day stands as a historical anomaly that continues to inspire renewed attention from the world. The B-36 Peacemaker the B-36 Peacemaker strategic bomber was another aircraft intended to be upgraded to carry microfighters to launch. Its microfighters would be the McDonnell F-85 Goblin, and it would house up to four of them. The B-36 was the ideal pick this time in the 1950s, thanks to its massive size and weight. Its 230-foot wings would dwarf even those of the B-52 Stratofortress and cement the B-36 as one of the largest aircraft to ever take to the skies. Its weight comes in at an astonishing 410,000 pounds when fully loaded with fuel and up to 86,000 pounds of weapons. Despite all of these bragging rights, the B-36 would never fly an operational mission as although it was designed to give the U.S. the capability of bombing Berlin efficiently, World War II would since have ended by the time it was ready. However, its massive size and range prompted the Air Force to consider its use as a flying aircraft carrier, but that too would not come into fruition as the advent of mid-air refueling dramatically increased the operational range of all varieties of aircraft and ultimately undermined the importance of the range of the B-36 Peacemaker. Lockheed C-130 Hercules Away from the attempts of the 1900s, the U.S. has relatively recently been looking into a new flying carrier program. Since 2015, the United States Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, has been investigating the prospect of using a modified Lockheed C-130 Hercules cargo aircraft to deploy and support Dynetics X-61 Gremlins unmanned aerial vehicles as microfighters. And on completing their missions, these microfighters are recovered using a proprietary air recovery method involving a drogue-like receptacle and docking technique. Testing is currently being conducted at Dugway Proving Grounds with International Air Response providing the contracted C-130A. In January of 2022, one of these tests saw DARPA successfully launch an X-61 Gremlin UAV from the bay of the C-130. Should the tests get the check mark and see the aircraft carrier officially launched, it would enable the U.S. to deploy drones from motherships while still outside of enemy air defenses, allowing the drones to go on and engage targets before returning to the airspace around the mothership to be recaptured and carried home for service or repairs. However, the tests aren't all rosy, as despite a test showing that the drone could in fact be deployed by the C-130, the drone itself would be ultimately destroyed after an hour and a half of flight that ended in a parachute failure. It would appear that each program comes complete with its own problems that limit the program's success greatly. As is tradition at this point, a set of problems have surfaced regarding the modern concept of flying aircraft carriers. Here are those problems. About a hundred years since the earliest attempts, the U.S. military is still faced with problems that could prevent a flying aircraft carrier from seeing the light of day. These problems include cost. The USS Gerald Ford cost $13 billion to build. Adding flying capabilities to such a vessel would make that number soar higher than the carrier ever could. Of course, the military could make a smaller, lighter flying aircraft carrier, but whatever the size, it'll likely cost almost too much. Lack of infrastructure and purpose. To build a vessel that hasn't ever been built before would require entirely new infrastructure. The heavy vessel would also need a special landing strip unless it plans to mar conventional landing strips designed for significantly lighter aircraft. 
While the U.S. probably could build such infrastructure, the question of why comes into play. Sea-based aircraft carriers can already access virtually every nation on the planet through a vast sea network. So why then should the U.S. invest billions of dollars into new vessels for the exact same job? Explosiveness. Although rare, aircraft crashes are somewhat inherent to aircraft. Should a flying aircraft carrier powered by a nuclear reactor crash, it would be synonymous with a nuclear bomb detonating. Therefore, no nation wants such a vessel flying overhead. And there we have it. Reasons to and reasons not to build flying aircraft carriers. Which would win? No one knows. But two things are known for sure. One, flying aircraft carriers would be a game changer should the U.S. military eventually succeed. And two, the U.S. military wants you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like to encourage their efforts. So do that now. And thanks for watching.